But you know, one thing we haven't talked a lot about is the gender issues too that came into play when you have with Marcia Clark. Not only is she a mother, um, she was going through some custody issues. There are also people criticizing her appearance. You know, they were criticizing her lack of, I guess, exposure or at least ability to see or awareness of some of the racial issues. Did you think that watching it back, and you know, we talked about this is giving us a clear picture. One, did you think it was fair to her? And two, is that typically from some of your female colleagues what you see when it comes to how people are judging female attorneys or even female workers and employees versus their male counterparts? Uh, I don't think it was fair to her. Um, in many instances, I feel like it was over the line, you know, with National Enquirer and things like that. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, some people betrayed her by submitting photos and, you know, photos from when she was on vacation and things like that. But just talking about someone's appearance, their hair, their hairstyle, how they dress, I, I don't know. I just think that that's crossing the line. And I don't, you're right, I don't know that a male attorney would get that same type of scrutiny. I mean, I don't think people would put that much emphasis on it for a male. So, yeah, I, I mean, you could see the pain in the right, yeah. in her. and um, Which is interesting that people weren't sympathetic you know, at the time. I mean, they were very, and I don't know if, again, it's going back to the race, they were just so focused on seeing the good or seeing or, you know, the greatness in LJ that they're just going to villainize everyone that is going against them. You're right. And it was mean then, but could you imagine now? It was like Twitter. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like Chris yeah. Darden with the Michael Jordan crying me. <laughs> uh, I mean, they would, they would just have so many Well, and different... I would hope at least now you would get more of a balanced side. I mean, maybe not. Because sometimes when things come out and people, I remember with Zendaya, the popular singer, she wore some kind of dress to an award show. And you did have some people say some negative things, but then a host of people came out to defend her. I, I would hope that in this day and age, she would get a lot more people defending her, but maybe yeah. not. I mean, it'll still be focused on something that's yeah. not the case. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't, I mean, yeah, you can have people defending you, but I don't think that makes the criticism less personal or less harsh mm -hmm. and, you know, less hurtful. Um, it's just, because it's, it's just, it's personal. It's not... It wasn't about her strategies or her. Which they courtroom. did criticize. I mean, they criticize. Okay, but but you're a professional. You're in the DA's office, and you're doing a high profile case. You can deal with people criticizing your strategy, the decisions you made, whether you should put on the glove or not. You know all that. Okay, that's part of it. But just your appearance is just to me is just over the line. Well, another interesting thing that a lot of people have been talking about with Johnny Cochran. He had um, a wife as well as an ex-wife, and also I think allegedly had a mistress. Um, had kids in both, you know, marriages, and, and yet no one really focused on whether or not he was a good or bad father, or you know, whatever family moral values has. But with her, we got a lot into the custody, whether or not she was being a bad mother because she was leaving work early or was putting too much time into this case. What do you think about that? Does those Again, double standards. Well, they, well they, there was some uh, depiction of Johnny Cochran's uh, issues <laughs> with uh, like domestic abuse. Um, so, but you're right, it didn't, I don't think they spent as much time on it. But also, it was the response. Like, when that happened to him, he just took it on, head on, and just, you know, told him them how he felt about it in a I don't want to sound like I'm picking on a gender, but just in a strong, forceful manner. He just came out, kind of like put them in their place about it, and then just moved on. It was like he was like Teflon Johnny, like nothing could stick to him. But I think part of that was the way, and I'm not saying this is gender related or anything, but it was just the way he just dealt with it. He just hit it head on. He just came back and hit hard at them, and then just moved on from it. So I partially I credit him for that. But all of the depictions of him were not favorable in that show. I mean, he they showed him as being very um, slippery, conniving, do whatever you got to do to win. Um, even 
resorting to the race car itself wasn't, you know, that wasn't the universal agreement on that within the defense team um, initially. But um, on a personal note, though, I'll say that in working on that part of the trial that we did, he was the most professional, civil attorney when he came to North Carolina, even before he just, he treated us like we were Johnny Conklin. I mean, he was, if, if he told you he was going to call you at three o'clock, if he couldn't call you, his secretary would call and say, Mr. Cochran is late, he's still in court, but as soon as he gets out, he'll call you. Amazing. I, I don't, I've never come in contact with another attorney on that level or any level who was as civil as he was. It was, it was just amazing. Well, let me introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so